welcome you to the Ford Center. Time for you to pick a color in this rivalry. Is it going to be Big Red of Oklahoma, or are you going to be all clad in orange cheering for the Cowboys? Hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with Reed Geddes. Reed, it's Bedlam. And here's what's exciting about this, folks. These guys normally play on each other's home courts. Now, for only the fourth time in history, they're playing on a neutral court. And for the first time here in Oklahoma City, the other three at Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Take the statistics, throw them out the window. Take the standings, throw them out the window. This is Bedlam, and there's nothing like Bedlam. <laughs> in Bedlam 3, they played twice this year. Both games very close. As recently as the last game of the season, won by the Sooners by just four points, it's Bedlam. As Emerald would say, we've kicked it up a notch here in the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Check out our Star Watch, two of the most athletic players in the country. Two games this year, Blake Griffin against the, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, averaging 30 points and 16 rebounds. James Anderson coming off of a career high against Oklahoma, 37 points last game of the season. These are our two stars of this game. So let's check out these starting lineups for these two teams and for the Cowboys. Byron Eaton, he's got to get his game back in gear, even though he scored 11 last night against Iowa State with six assists. He was just two for 12 from the field. Terrell Harris joins him, and Keaton Page in the backcourt, and Marshall Moses. He'll have a key task in trying to stop Blake Griffin, who, of course, starts for the Oklahoma Sooners. Tony Crocker, Willie Warren, Austin Johnson in that backcourt. And the Griffin brothers, Blake and Taylor, which leads us right into our principal financial group edge to the game. Last night, Travis Ford got the Obi Manella of hold. Tonight, he needs the, the Byron Eaton of old. Byron mm. Eaton really struggling the last two games. And then for Oklahoma, if the Cowboys are going to be led to the promised land, it's going to be by Moses. <laughs> and if Oklahoma will attack Marshall Moses, get him in foul trouble, just like they did the last time these two teams played, well, I'll tell you what, there will be nobody to stand in the way of Blake Griffin. So Byron Eaton and Moses trying to lead the Cowboys out of the desert and into that promised land against the best player in the country, Blake Griffin of the Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners in their white jerseys and Oklahoma State in black. And the ball will go first to OU. Griffin was knocked Twisted down. His ankle. He did on that opening tip, gets up slowly. I've never seen somebody twist their ankle on the opening tip. And they lay off Griffin. And they get it around, and a quick double team on Blake Griffin. Look at him power his way through. No basket. Foul came first. The Cowboys are led by Travis Ford, who was in his first year with Oklahoma State. 21 wins in his first season with the Cowboys. And he's not smiling because he's happy. And that was a tough call. First play out of the block. Marshall Moses getting a foul immediately. Travis Ford thought that Blake Griffin hooked him. Well, the Sooners head coach is Jeff Capel and what he has done to turn this program around in just his third year. And, of course, this 27-win season this year is the most wins that Oklahoma's had in quite some time. And so here they are looking for perhaps a number one seat in the NCAAs. Taken away by Warren, but he can't save it, and it goes back to the Cowboys. The most dangerous pass in basketball is parallel to the free throw line. If you're out there and you don't put some pepper on it, you float that thing, somebody is going to run through that passing lane. What about the emotion of this game, not just from this crowd, but for the players? Does it take them a little bit of time to settle into the game like this? You never know. When you have a game this big, you don't know whether they're going to come in too geeked up, too jacked up, or whether they're just going to come in ready to play. What well, did you see Griffin change that shot of Moses? Three-pointer off, no good. There's Taylor Griffin. Eton forces it out of bounds. It goes off of Byron. Travis Ford is down there pleading the case, saying that ball actually went off the thigh. Of Griffin. Well, Travis Ford's got his game face on today. Yeah, I he mean, sure he is fired up and ready to go. <laughs> well, it didn't take him long, did it? Now, Not watch again. Byron Eaton reaches in, pokes that ball, and he's right. That ball went off of Taylor Griffin. It sure did. So the Sooners catch a break. Well, those officials are going, come on, Travis, let us ease into this one, buddy. Crocker, three pointer, well short. Eaton will track this one down. Here he comes. Tough for the Sooners to stop that penetration. And it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with OSU. What a challenge for Austin Johnson trying to keep Byron Eaton in front of him. 
when they played in Stillwater, Myron Eaton, nine for 10 from the free throw line. Harris, offensive foul. He slams into Crocker, who comes up a little bit lame. The first foul on Harris. Yeah, over penetration, and right there, jump stop. You can't go up and float, and it's hard to take a charge on the other side of the rim. Look, he's completely on the other side of the rim when he drew that charge. Now, that's a tough one, but you get to the paint, jump stop. You are not going to get all the way to the rim. Griffin again, look how far they lay off of Griffin. Not this Griffin. Here comes that double again. Good rotation by Oklahoma State. Rotate and recover. That'll right. be a key. So Taylor Griffin says, you're going to lay off that much? I can shoot. Hey, Dave, I'm telling you, if Taylor Griffin knocks down that shot, you can't beat this team. I'm just telling you, they, are, they will become impossible to beat. Anderson for three. Boy, that was right on target, just a hair strong. Now Warren. Boy, is that a great matchup? Yeah, it is. Really Warren and Byron Eaton on the perimeter. Eaton so low, oh, Warren's yeah. taller, but you get the sense that Eaton thinks he can get in and do some damage. How about that steal by Taylor Griffin? Careless turnover. And the lock! Wow! Austin Johnson to Taylor Griffin. Careless turnover. All OU to start, all Taylor Griffin to start. Knocked out of bounds. And the turnover is leading to Sooner points. Uh, this should have been a this should have been a dunk. I mean, just threw it right through Taylor Griffin like he didn't even see him, and then it leads to this finish. Nice job, Taylor Griffin, calling for that as he's filling that right side lane. You, of course, played point guard on that Pi Slamma Jamma team. Can you see the big guys pointing toward the basket Absolutely. when you're coming down? You see a big guy running, and you see an arm goes up. He's telling you, you get it close to the rim, and I'll go get it. So Taylor Griffin off to a hot start for OU with all four points. Well, you look at this Bedlam series, and the Sooners lead it overall. In fact, they've won five in a row in this series. So the Sooners have really had their way with Oklahoma State of late. Both games this year, very close. 89-81 in Stillwater, 82-78 in Norman. Look at that first game in Stillwater, Blake Griffin, out rebounded Oklahoma State. Unbelievable. He had 19, right? 19 to 18 favor Blake Griffin. That's silly. <laughs> that is just a nut statistic. And Blake Griffin has hardly missed a shot in the two games. 21 for 26 while averaging 30 points in two games. That's unreal. That's unreal. That's staggering. That's 80%, folks, from the field. 21 to 26 in two games. Warren into Griffin. Look at that quick turn. He's hauled down and an intentional foul called on Moses. Why, why would you do that? I mean, why would you do that? Not only is it your second foul, Travis Ford is living right now with Marshall Moses. There is no reason for that foul ever, but certainly at this stage of the game. I mean, that is just a silly mistake. Now, Marshall Moses now will go to the bench maybe for the rest of the first half. Yep. And Travis Ford, I mean, who are you going to put in? You put in Malcolm Kirkland to try to defend him, but uh, that was that was a serious mental mistake. Wasn't that one of your keys to this game? Moses had to stay in the game, and here it is, not even four minutes old, and he's out. But, I, I mean, why that kind of foul? It's one thing if it was just an aggressive foul and, and you got called for body in him. But to wrap your arms around his neck and slam him to the ground, not to mention, I, I wouldn't get Blake Griffin mad. <laughs> I just, it's, maybe it's just me, but I, I don't want him mad out there on the floor. What do they say about sleeping giants? Oh, huh? my gosh. And Griffin hits the free throws. Moses, he goes to the bench. And he will get an earful from his coaches. See, he's mad. He's saying, look, he hit me first. So what? 
but nobody cares. You're on the bench, and he's out there playing. And then a travel by Blake Griffin. Well, Anthony Brown now comes in and will try to put his big, strong body on Blake Griffin. I'd run over there and say, hey, big fella, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't get mad. <laughs> That's what I'd do if I was Byron Eaton. I mean, you don't feel this sort of intensity early in a game normally, but this is Bedlam. Anderson, and he walked with it. So three turnovers on the Cowboys. Yeah, it's a good idea to up fake and jump into the guy, but only if he leaves his feet. Yeah. And Travis Ford looked over at his assistant coaches and put his palms up and said, what's he doing? I mean, you jump into somebody when they jump for your up fake. If they don't, you can't just step into them. I, I kind of look at the first part of this game a little bit nerves both yeah, sides. I agree with that. But there is a special intensity. Yeah, there there is. No question about that. And a walk by Crocker. Another turnover for OU. That's three for the Sooners. Hard to get a flow in this game with already six combined turnovers between Capel Sooners and Ford's Cowboys. Eton just trying to calm things down a little bit. Harris from the wing, a three-pointer rattles home. A terrific use of a down screen by Terrell Harris. He started to curl, saw the defender go over the top, and then he flared off that screen. Warren, good help defensively by Manello. Oh boy, they had Griffin yeah, open. they did deep. I don't know why Taylor didn't give it to him. Three-pointer Warren off target. Griffin fighting for the rebound. And a whistle and a foul. This one called on Brown. He was just trying to box out, confused. He doesn't get the call. Blake Griffin does. But some signs of life for Oklahoma State as Terrell Harris hits from the wing. A one-point game. We're back after this from Phillips 66. Welcome back to the Ford Center where the Sooners lead by one over the Cowboys in this Bedlam series. Oklahoma State, everybody knows, Reed, that they rely on three-point plays. How do they get their guys open? Now they get open by reading the defense. Watch Anthony Brown. He'll come down and set a screen for Terrell Harris, and then we'll stop it. He comes down, he sets the screen. Now stop it right there. Terrell Harris is reading the defense. Tony Crocker tries to go over the top. So instead of Terrell Harris curling, he runs a flare cut and flares back and is wide open. Reads the defender, steps back, flare cut, knocks it down. Perfect job reading the defense. So if Crocker does something else defensively, then there's a different reaction uh, for Harris. The next time he trails him, then he'll curl off of that screen. Warren pulls up, long range, got it! Willie Warren. National freshman of the year? I think so. I think so. He's too. already been named that way by Athlon. And I think he's going to get a lot more votes and a lot more publications. He was tough to keep off of the first team all conference squad. Uh, absolutely. A unanimous pick as a freshman of the year in this conference. And a bad turnover there. Here comes Warren. That was too easy for OU. Oh, strong. How many careless turnovers for the Cowboys already? Yeah, if they have many more, they're not going to be in this basketball game. Anthony Brown just not used to having the ball down on the offensive end. And the whistle came first, no foul. But Anthony Brown, he looked like he had no idea what to do hey, with the ball. That's exactly right. He turns and looks. He, do, he doesn't know what to do with it. Well, the worst thing you can do is throw it out towards the other basket. And look who has checked back in for Oklahoma State as out goes Brown, in comes Moses. So Warren, he comes in and Moses, now this is a key development read, he's playing with two fouls. But here's the problem, you check in with two fouls, you still got 14-38 in the first half, you'd say, okay, be careful. You can't guard Blake Griffin being careful. Yeah. Do you let him, can, he's the only guy out there that really can guard uh, that's Griffin. What I, was I mean, was Obi, say, Manoa, well, who maybe? else could you put on him? I yeah. don't know. Moses, and did he walk, he did. Another turnover. Now five turnovers for the Cowboys in the first six minutes of this game. And Travis Ford's probably thinking at least four of those are just silly. Yeah, silly. Maybe a little too hyped. A little too pumped mm -hmm. up. 
I always get a sense in these kinds of games, Reed, the team that settles in first has yeah. the best I advantage. Think, I think that's a good observation. And it was kicked out by Eton. It'll stay with OU. And Jeff Cable's team, kind of calm, cool, collected, much like their coach. Travis Ford came out, and look at the intensity on his face, trying to win this Bedlam series for the first time for Ford. Here comes Manella. Boy, he was great yes, last was. night against Iowa State, and he is fouled by one of the Griffins. I think it's Taylor. You're exactly right. This kid was great last night. He was the Obi Manella of old. That's what Travis Ford said. Obi in December led this team in scoring and rebounding. Got into a little bit of a funk, got in the doghouse. The last game against Iowa State only played 11 minutes. Last yeah. night, 18 points, 12 rebounds, and great energy. And don't forget, if you're interested in the 2009 ESPN National Golf Challenge, it's already underway. And all you have to do is log on to ESPNGolf.com for more information. Manello, one for two at the line. Five-point Oklahoma lead. Omar Leary now in for OU. One good thing for the Cowboys, they've done a pretty good job in containing Blake Griffin so far. Griffin. Three seconds in the lane for the Sooners. Interesting, Curtis Shaw made that call from up here at the slash mark. John Higgins standing underneath the basket. That's usually the other officials call on a three seconds. That's interesting. Watch the top of your screen and you see Taylor step in. And well, he wasn't in there very long. I don't know. He may have been counting while he was standing in that blue, the mm. NBA playing. Anderson throws it on the wing. That's where Harris hit one before, not this time. And the rebound goes over the arm of Manillo. You know, that replay shows why John Higgins didn't make the call. Yeah, that's right. Again, Griffin bottled up, doesn't matter. Still gets a shot off. And then here come the Cowboys. Good defense. Manello, no. Warren. Well, he does everything for you. But throws this one away. Uh, you can't say you can't boo because the ball hits the referee the referee the rules are he's part of the court right so the ball hits him and he's out of bounds and it's out of bounds but you can't look at him and go hey you got to get out of the way no no he doesn't it would have gone out of bounds anyway yeah it would have i mean he just would have gone out faster i mean back in the day higgins <laughs> higgins would have dodged that back in the day uh oh <laughs> oh he's gonna get on you for that now. <laughs> he's slowing down a little <laughs> you have to do some agility training in the off season <laughs> <laughs> Five turnovers for the Sooners. That one off John Higgins. He's, he's going to be all over you yeah, now. He is. Eton slipped. Oklahoma State lucky to get it back. Manello, boy, that's a key development for the Cowboys. It's energy. I mean, it, when you play hard and play with energy, you end up having confidence, and that's the way Obi Manello is playing right now. Moses doing a good job inside. And Blake Griffin again denied. Page for three. Two Sooners fighting for it. Kate Davis came down with it. Well, now that time. Yeah, I agree. You're Blake say three Griffin seconds? was in there more than three seconds, and they didn't call it. I agree. He ran the floor in transition. He runs to the lip of the realm. Gets down there, sets up, turns around, and tries to seal the defender. And he was down there a long time. He came down, and he's already in the lane right now. You can't see it, but I, I'm telling you, if you were going to call three seconds, that was the one to call. And the foul goes on Moses, his uh -oh. third. It was a gamble. Tipped out by Brown. And it'll stay with OU. And so far, Moses who's now sitting on the bench, and I'm sure he'll sit the rest of this half with three fouls. But, you know, they've done a pretty good job on Blake Griffin. You know, they trail in this game by three. He's only taken one shot and missed that. They've done a great job on him, denying him. Brown, single coverage this time. Tough shot for Griffin. You'll settle for him oh, taking shots like that. Yes, you will. That's exactly the shot you want him taking if you're Travis Ford. 
Anderson, no shot. Foul came first. And a foul is called against OU. So it's Oklahoma led by Taylor Griffin, not Blake, who lead by three. Welcome you back to the Ford Center in Oklahoma City. It's Bedlam between Oklahoma State and seventh ranked Oklahoma. With Reed Geddes, I'm Dave Armstrong watching these two coaches now battle, trying to settle their teams down because both these teams are turning the ball over far too often. Earlier today, we saw Baylor in a big upset over the first seeded Kansas Jayhawks. And then we just witnessed Texas getting by Kansas State in a classic game earlier today. Good pass, and then a good steal by Johnson. Manello did go up strong, or Brown didn't, and now he whistled a foul on the Cowboys. Well, you look at it with Baylor now advancing, and what a run they've had winning their first two games, and Texas beating Kansas State today. So those two guys will go head-to-head. -head. Tomorrow, starting at 6 o'clock, the winner of this game will take on the winner of Missouri and Texas Tech. That's the game that will conclude the coverage tonight. Yeah, we're kind of blowing some coaching cliche and theories out of the water where you need to be playing your best basketball coming into the postseason. Baylor came into the postseason playing their worst basketball. Right. And they've gone on a run. And another coaching cliche is it's tough to beat the same team three times in a row. And that's what the Sooners are trying to do here this evening. And they're up 13 to 8. But so far, you don't get a sense there's a real flow to this game. More turnovers than assists by far. In fact, two combined turnovers for these teams. And look at the field goal shooting. Everybody's struggling. And again, I think that just a lot of that is nerve. So let's everybody take a collective deep breath and restart this thing. You ready? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't had a turnover yet. Anderson for three. Yep. Ooh, that's way off. He's got it again. Wide open for three. Got it. That's what a shooter does. You don't miss a shot and then turn one down. You miss a shot bad, you come right back and bury it, and nice pass by Byron Eton. I was going to say, Reed, with Eton, he knows that. He's like, i got to get him back in the flow. If we lose Anderson, we're going to lose this game. As soon as he that ball touched his hands, what a hanging shot by Tony Crawford. Here as we go. As soon as that ball touched Byron Eton's hands, he immediately went back to James Anderson. Page looked at a shot, was covered up. Well, look at everybody standing on the perimeter for Oklahoma State. Eton whips it inside. Brown was there. What a pass. Beautiful pass by Byron Eton. Boy, they, you could just see that coming. The way everybody was lifted out on the perimeter, you knew somebody was going to back cut. Already three assists for Eton. Second in the Big 12 this year in assists behind only Texas Tech's John Robertson. And rarely does Blake Griffin sit. He's sitting now, and Willie Warren taking over. He wants to be the Phillips 66 player of the game because he's shooting from the Phillips 66 decal. <laughs> he's filling it up from the Phillips 66 <laughs> yes, he logo. Is. <laughs> he's a hardworking player, isn't he? And a three from Obi Manello. They followed our advice. They've taken a deep breath, and here we go. They are trading baskets, aren't they? Johnson trying to get loose of Eton. Anderson and Warren. How about that athleticism of those two? Yeah, good call. And that's, a, that's a push off by Warren. That's an offensive foul on Willie. Sure did. Took that left forearm, put it in the chest of James Anderson, and just cleared him out. That's a good call. Watch that left forearm. James Anderson doing a good job moving his feet, moving his feet, beating him to a spot. That's a good call. Put his arm up there and just shoved him off. Boy, he did it right in yep. front of Curtis sure Shaw, did. too. It was obvious when you get that kind of separation and you can see the arm fly out there, you have to make that call as the official. Yeah, Willie Warren will learn when you've got a guy that much retreating, that much out of balance, a crossover dribble will do the same thing. Mm. Just come to a sudden stop and cross over and he'll just go flying right by you. 
Three-pointer good for Harris. And the Cowboys take the lead. Uh, Jeff Capel's not happy. He's pointing down at the floor and looking at his guy, saying, we have got to get hands up on the perimeter. They've got to make jump shots over high hands. Oklahoma State, their first lead of the game. Well, look at him drag the double team all the way to half court. Griffin, is that a charge? It is. Blake Griffin dragged the double team from the post all the way to half court to try to open up Taylor Griffin. And I'm not so sure Taylor Griffin didn't travel. Watch, he catches the ball. He sure did travel. Yeah, when he, he shuffled ball. his feet, didn't he? he? Traveled and a charge. Man, what terrific rotation by Oklahoma State on defense. That double team was up here at half court. It was. Normally the double comes and then as soon as he goes out, you know, you drop off the double, but they stay with it. Now Manello. And he charged in. Blake Griffin gets the call. The point you're making is a good one that normally you have the double team. Blake takes a retreat dribble and the double team leaves. That's when Blake's at his best. When the double team guy turns his back, then Blake attacks. Oklahoma State's not going to release the double. They're going to stay doubled until he gets the ball out of his hands. Good strategy by Travis Ford. One. Patilla is in there now. That would have counted had it gone. And the foul here on Anthony Brown. A reminder that tonight's Big 12 game is brought to you by Sonic's new everyday value menu. It's not just good. It's Sonic good. Now going to the line, Blake Griffin has two points, both of them from the line where he's two for two. The foul on Brown, his second. 18 fouls on the Cowboys. All year long, I've wanted to work on his free plays. And what would you do? That his upper body and his lower body don't match. His lower body straightens up and extends before the ball's in his release point. Watch his lower body. Ex he extends, he comes up, and then there's a oh, hitch. Yeah, yeah. And he ought to keep a fluid motion going all the way up. As a result, only a 59% free throw shooter. There's not many flaws in his game, but that's one of them. It's sort of like he's got the yips from the free throw. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't have a hitch. You, it, it, you extend all the way through the shot. You can't extend and then stop. Eton left free. And maybe this is the shot that gets him going. Look at that smile on Eton's face as he's ready to defend. And then a reach in foul. So both the Cowboys and the Sooners shaking off the early game jitters. The Nets are filled with basketballs now. And we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Now, Toby Keith, a big Sooner fan, sitting with Bob Steves, the head football coach for the Oklahoma Sooners here at the Ford Center, watching Oklahoma State take the lead 21-19. And Mike Gundy, the head football coach of the Cowboys, also in attendance. Of course, Gundy and Stoops have been involved in Bedlam through the years. And so these guys, and will this guy, will Byron Eton one day play for Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State? He is talking about it. If he doesn't get a shot at basketball as a professional, he may use his one year of eligibility remaining to go play football. Five years of college eligibility. You can only use four in one sport, and if you're talented enough, you can use that fifth in another sport. Wouldn't that be a fascinating oh, story? That'd be great. Of course, he was a great option quarterback in high school he won't play quarterback at Oklahoma State but can't you see him as a safety well you know what else I can see I, I I heard the rumor that Bob Stoops is talking to Blake Griffin he thinks that Sam Bradford could probably get the ball to him in the corner of the end zone <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's good all you have to stay four more years then we'll play a little football yeah, right. <laughs> Jeff Cable's like that's a good idea I think his future like is decided idea. look at Eton and then I think he changed Absolutely. his shot because Blake Griffin was there he looked Blake Griffin in the eyes put that ball over in his left hand and short armed it can you imagine him running a fade route to the corner of the end zone? Oh, my. Stoops can imagine it. And the first field goal for Blake Griffin. He's got five points now. And Oklahoma back in front. Harris tries the other side. There's Griffin with the rebound. 
Austin Johnson. And a foul here on Etan. That's his second. Well, you look at the influence of Blake Griffin in this game. Watch Byron Etan look to his right. He looks right at him and sees him and then tries to push off even and sticks it up under and then down on the other end. That's your post route right there. You know, toss it up high in the corner and let the soft hands of Blake Griffin go snatch it out of the air. You know what I like too about that? The way he thanked his teammate, you know? I mean, he is one of those complete players that he doesn't forget his teammates, even though this year has really been all about Blake Griffin. He is the guy that is the consummate team player. One of the best team building activities you got in the tool is the point. Anytime someone throws you a basket, throws you a ball, and you make a basket, you ought to come out pointing at that guy. What that does is it says, hey, the significance of that play was you. The attention should be on you. And then you think that guy will hesitate to throw it to you again? Wow, Patilla with a block. Now Griffin. Here comes the double. A little bit late, though, and Griffin able to score. A sky hook. A step through sky hook, all set up with a terrific block on the other end by Juan Patillo. Not just pointing, but talking, Blake Griffin. And an eight straight points by the Sooners. What a presence Juan Patillo has brought to this Oklahoma Sooner team after he took his red shirt off. I mean, he just ate that shot up. Leads down to the other end in the sweet sky hook by Blake Griffin. Get that boy a pair of goggles. Yeah, that looked like Jabarish. That young man, that was nice. Well, Patillo with a block at one end, and what a difference Juan Patillo has made on this Oklahoma team. Here was a guy who was going to redshirt, and then Blake Griffin started talking to him like he is now and said, you know what, if you want to play with me, you probably ought to suit up right now. And Willie Warren and Blake Griffin were instrumental in getting Juan Patillo to say, I'm done with this whole redshirting business. And his athleticism has really changed OU. I cannot imagine making the decision to not have played basketball with the Kim Olajuwon. And that's exactly what the decision <laughs> that Juan Patillo almost made. That's true. He almost made the decision, I'm going to pass up a year of playing basketball with Blake Griffin. Was that wow. even a thought? Oh, please. <laughs> but I mean, why would you pass up a chance to play with Blake Griffin? Johnson. That would have brought the Sooner house down. Page is fouled on his way to the basket. That one on Warren. So Willie Warren picks up his second foul. Yeah, Blake Griffin doing a little bit of everything on every end of the court, even helping Terrell Harris up after a hard knockdown. How can you get mad at a guy like that? He knocks you down and then, oh, come on, son, let me pick you up here. I, I mean, why would you get mad at him? Well, yeah. It didn't work out so well for Marshall Moses. No, it didn't. <laughs> Here's Keaton Page. Kirkland tried to keep it alive and does. Page for a good decision. Now a longer three. Got it! Wow! Well, he felt that one, didn't he? I yeah. mean, he wanted to shoot at the time before, did a good job finding a teammate, and then took two steps back. I mean, he backed up, but he caught the ball ready to shoot. It's almost like he wanted to make up for his missed free throw. The Cowboys clear the glass. Crocker misses from point blank range. Manello doesn't settle for a jump shot. Attacking the basket, Obi Manello. Boy, these Cowboys just come at you, don't they? They really do. Austin Johnson will pull it back out as the Cowboys answer that 8-0 run by OU. An adjustment on the defensive end, going a zone. Crocker, his shot no good. And all by his lonesome for the rebound. James Anderson, now Page another three. Oh. Johnson across the timeline. Johnson looks a little winded right yes, now. Yes, he does. I think Jeff Cable agrees with you. He immediately got Omar Leary over to the table. Page trying to push it. Kirkland trying to back in. 
And challenging the big fella. He has changed every shot that the Cowboys have tried to take inside. Wasn't much of a challenge. I mean, that was a little bit like, I'm not sure I really want to shoot this shot. Johnson tries a three. He's way off target. But sneaking in for the rebound, Cade Davis. You cannot give up that kind of rebound. You're in a 2-3 zone. You've got the big guys boxed out. Perimeter guys got to put your rear end on somebody and keep them out. Manello with a three. A little bit shy. Good rebound by Anderson. It got away from Crocker. Page again, no. Crocker tried to keep it alive. Knocked out of bounds by Manello. It'll belong to the Sooners when we come back. Well, the Cowboys are trying to turn a page here and beat OU for the first time this season. Right now, though, they trail OU by three. Welcome back to Oklahoma City. The Sooners, seventh in the nation on top of the Cowboys. And welcome, everyone, coming up at the half. We'll have all the highlights from around the country. And, Brendan, what about the backcourt for the Sooners? They haven't played extremely well tonight. I think that's a key for them tonight and beyond. Well, in their two wins, it was Austin Johnson in Stillwater, and it's Willie Warren and Norm that stepped up. The Cowboys doing a good job so far, but somebody typically steps up on the perimeter for Oklahoma. Reed Geddes, who do you think that might be? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, Austin Johnson's looking a little fatigued. People don't realize he doesn't practice much during the week because of that bag. But Brendan, Dave made a great made a great point during that timeout. Oklahoma State's offense has really stagnated with Byron Eton over there on the bench. They need Eton to get back in this game or keep it close until so he doesn't pick up another foul. That's a strong post move by Blake Griffin. And look at the position read that he had. I mean, he was point blank range. If he gets both feet in the paint, it's too it's too late to stop him. Even with a double team. Absolutely. Manello pulls up. Oh, man. Oh, is that sweet shot. I, I mean, just jumped right up over Omar Leary. Omar Leary, 5'11", inch senior, and Obi just went over him. So, 10 points now for Manello to go along with what he did last night against Iowa State when he scored 18 points with 12 rebounds. Leary. Anthony Brown doing a good job fronting Blake Griffin. Boy, that's a bad pass. It was. Manello able to pick that off. Obi pulls up again. This time blocked by Patillo. That's two blocks already for Patillo. Leary, three-pointer no. They will give Oklahoma that shot every time down the court. Are you surprised a little bit that OU's offense isn't going every time through Blake Griffin? I, I'm telling you, if he doesn't put his hands on the ball every time, you're making a mistake because he passes so well. Yeah. I mean, the best thing you can do to get open is let him touch the ball, let him read the double team and find the open man. Anderson, and there's Griffin. Oh, there's Anderson. No, Manello. Sorry, I was blocked by the official, but Griffin gets it back again. Johnson almost double dribbled with it. In this zone, Oklahoma State trying to protect some guys who are in foul trouble. Eton with two fouls, Brown with two fouls, and Moses with three. Leary tripped up on his way into the paint. Phillips 66 proud to be the presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. The next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline. Specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hard working gas. Dave Omar Leary at the free throw line only averages two points per game. Except in the last four, he's been really solid. He's averaged seven points per game in the last four, and that's an added point production for Jeff Capel from the perimeter that he did not anticipate. Now how about this? He scored 33 points in his first 26 games. He has 27 points in his last four. And a lot of that because Austin Johnson, yeah, that's right. his back, 
isn't what it was earlier this year and so Leary having to play more with Johnson kind of hobbled a little bit interesting that they're both playing together right now and a lot of that because you have the foul trouble of Willie Warren who's on the bench with two fouls. play 20 minutes as these two teams huddle up to get ready for the second half it's Oklahoma leading by one 34 to 33 hi again everyone I'm Dave Armstrong along with Reed Geddes do you have a feel for this one yet I really don't I mean it's halftime it's a one-point differential and the game was pretty even neither team played great neither team played terrible for Oklahoma too many turnovers two assists ten turnovers too many fouls for Oklahoma State. Check out those first half highlights brought to you by Shelter Insurance. Now for Oklahoma State, I thought Obi Manello was terrific. Pick it up right where he left off. Ten points, five rebounds. Terrell Harris knocked down two three-point field goals for Oklahoma. Blake Griffin started slow, ended up pretty good. I mean, he was quiet and still had 11 points and five rebounds. And what a beautiful move at the end of halftime by Blake Griffin. Yeah, quiet 11. Shelter insurance for your auto, home, and life. Seek shelter today. I mean, is that nuts? I, I mean, yeah, it's, right. it's such a point of reference. I mean, because you feel like he was quiet. If he matches the effort, he has 22 and 10. Do you know how many guys would kill for 22 and 10? It's routine for him, yeah, isn't it's it? It's unbelievable. It's almost like you start the game if you're the opposing coach and just pencil that number in. Hey, if you hold him to 20 and 10, you did a great job. Oklahoma State with it first. Taylor Griffin with the block on Harris. Here comes Austin Johnson. Oklahoma State really needs James Anderson to get going on the offensive end. Just one for five in the first half. Absolutely. Johnson almost loses it. Crocker was in the right spot. He spins into the lane. There's Griffin. That's Taylor. If you allow a dribble penetration against the zone, something bad's going to happen because that back row's got to rotate and there's nobody to help the helper. Moses in there along with Eton. And look at Moses. He had like eyes in the back of his head, so worried about where the defense was coming from. Yeah, and there's no defense to come on this play. Watch the dribble penetration as the defensive back line steps up. There's nobody back there in position that can even help you perimeter guys in his own defense. You've got to keep the ball outside. And they try to trap Crocker in the corner, and the foul came before the shot. Foul on Anderson, his second. You know, it goes against your instincts, but you're playing that front line, the back of the 2 3. If Tony Crocker dribble penetrates one of these other guards, I almost stay back and make them hit a 15 foot running shot as opposed to letting them dump it off to either of the Griffin brothers. Moses, remember, he sat the last portion of that first half, waits for the traffic to clear, and a great shot for Willie Warren. How strong is Willie Warren? That upper body, I mean, He's pump fake and wings up two and three Cowboys go past him. So two quick baskets by the Sooners and a quick timeout for Travis Ford. So Willie Warren heads up for a freshman and Oklahoma has the lead back after this from Phillips 66. It's Bedlam here at the Ford Center in Oklahoma City. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship quarterfinals and we've had some great headliners. You see Dexter Pittman helping Texas advance to play Baylor. Yes, the Bears, the number nine seed. How about the night for Michael Singletary? We'll talk more about that in a second. And Baylor, here they are in the semifinals, upsetting top seed of Kansas. As good as Lace Darius Dunn was in his biggest shots he hits, Baylor does not win that game without the contributions from Mamadou GM. He Page is fouled by Warren, who's picked up his third, and Page will shoot three free throws. You know, the whole nation, Reed, not just in the Big 12, but the entire nation is talking about Michael Singletary, aren't they? A good hustle by Willie Warren coming out to contest that shot, but did you see Keaton Page kick his leg out? He actually drew that foul, saw that Willie Warren was going to jump past him, contesting the shot, kicked his foot out to draw that foul. Page with two of the three free throws. He'll get one more. 
Page, a freshman out of Pawnee, Oklahoma. You almost feel like he's everybody's darling, don't I you? I think so. everybody's <laughs> little brother. <Yeah. laughs> he just, somebody, quick, the manager stole somebody's uniform. Kind of takes me back to watching his coach, Travis Ford, as a freshman yeah, at Missouri. That's a great comparison. Boy, he is a little power pack muscle, and is he quick with that ball? Mm -hmm. He is going to have a fabulous career in Stillwater in this system. Not kind of to score as much as he did in high school, where he averaged 50 points his senior year. Good move there by Austin Johnson. Now Eton. Harris. Boy, quick first step. Brown trying to keep it alive. Here comes Griffin, gives it up. Johnson to Crocker for three. You can hear the moans yeah. from that Sooner crowd. And a blocking foul by Crocker. That was pretty good defense. I, I think it was a block, but I tell you what, Tony Crocker really moving his feet on the perimeter. Look at him move his feet sideways, get to a spot and set down. Now that's a block, but that's awful good effort right there by Tony Crocker. His second foul. What a job he has done on James Anderson so far in this basketball game. James Anderson just one for five from the floor. Uh, there's two things to say about that. He's only hit one shot. The second, he's only taken five. Uh, it's because he can't get an open look. Right. But this is a kid that had a career high just about seven days ago. These same two teams at 37 points against OU. Then you get the sense that Jeff Capel challenged Tony Crocker and said, look, we can't have him scoring 37 yeah, again. Absolutely. Accept the challenge and be a defensive stopper. That's now four fouls on that last play by Marshall Moses. So Moses has got to come out. That was one of our keys to the game. Mm -hmm. well, for Oklahoma, you increase your chances of winning this game if that young man's going over to sit down on the bench in foul trouble. So it's the effect of Blake Griffin, isn't it? Absolutely. He just wears on you. You just can't defend him if you're in foul trouble because you can't be cautious and you can't avoid contact. I don't think you can defend him if you're not in foul trouble. Yeah, that's a good point. Alyssa <laughs> <laughs> on a foul. Here's this one on. The foul is called on Anderson, who's picked up his third. Take a look again. Yeah, absolutely. Good call. Crocker. And a travel. So another turnover for OU. That's now 11 for the Sooners. Eton, good pass. Eton had an open shot, didn't matter. Got the big fellow involved. Yeah, but what made that pass work was Byron Eton's eyes. He looked up at the basket like he was going to shoot, and that's what drew Blake Griffin to him. How do you know then, if you're Brown, that he's not going to shoot? You don't. You just have to keep your eye on the ball. But as soon, if you don't look at the rim, Blake Griffin never comes up and closes out on you to create the separation for Anthony Brown. We hopefully will look at that again and watch how that while Byron Eaton's ahead just snapped up like he was going to shoot that ball. Leary with a three-pointer that won't go. Here comes Anderson. Look at Crocker. Crocker's going to be able to tell Coach Capel what flavor of gum that Anderson is chewing here today. He is that close to James Anderson. He is, and a little too close the last two times. Let's look again at that play by Byron Eton and watch his head look up. Oh, it's a great camera angle. Comes off the screen and watch his eyes. He looks up, lifts his head, draws Blake Griffin to him. Perfect. What a great pass by Byron Eton. And really a good move there by Brown to Absolutely. go toward the basket to get in front, and then Eton is going to find you. Eton with five assists in this game. This time his shot is blocked by Austin Johnson. Here comes Johnson with Page backpedaling, oh. and Eton picks his pocket. What a play. Wow. What a play by Byron Eton. Three-pointer, no. Anderson knocked down. No foul call. Another steal, Anderson goes in on Griffin. Boy, the hustle of Byron Eton. You won't see a better defensive play in the open court than you just saw.
from Byron Eton. Not only the steal, but the presence not to throw it back underneath the other team's basket, but throw it as far down the half court as you can. What a play. Bedlam is more than okay in OKC. Griffin is fouled on his way to the hoop. So we've got our timeout tied at 40 as the Cowboys turn up the pressure defensively and Anderson able to come through for Oklahoma State. Welcome back to the Ford Center. Byron Eton getting a well-deserved break right now. Take us inside the game, Reed, and talk about his contribution for the Cowboys. The key to transition defense is to hustle back inside the ball. Now watch Byron Eton come off this screen. He misses the shot. Now look where he is. He's below the free throw line, and watch him hustle back inside the ball. He's pursuing, pursuing, gets inside the ball, and then the presence to throw the ball as far as he can back down to half court. Absolutely a great play by Byron Eton. You know, the thing there that I noticed, he knew instinctively that Paige had one side covered of Austin Johnson, so he goes to the other side. He goes inside the ball. Inside like the said. ball. It was, uh, you pursue and tip, but then the presence. So often you see a guy do that, and he throws it back up high, so the other team's catching it. Even if you don't throw it to your teammate, if you've thrown it to half court, the worst thing that happens is Oklahoma gains possession and then comes back at Byron Eton. What a play by Byron Eton. Blake Griffin at the line with a dozen points. Four of five from the stripe here tonight. And he misses that one. So a one point sooner lead as we near the 15 minute mark. Eton directing traffic. Eton, when talking about mouthpieces, more and more players are wearing them. He said he used to, but he realized with this young team, he needed to direct traffic a little bit more verbally. How about that move? No call. Looked like he drew some contact. Griffin gets away with some contact there, and another basket by Eton. So Eton took the mouthpiece out so that he could communicate better with his teammates. Good defensive play by Brown. Here comes Anderson. Look at him streak to the basket. Wow! <laughs> Davis for three. A rainbow that does not find the pot of gold. Here comes Page. A ton. Oh, Look at that crossover. <laughs> Count it and one. Oh, my. Uh-oh. You better go to the locker room and get your ankles retaped because somebody <laughs> just got their ankles broken. Oh, my. Oh, man. Look at this crossover. Omar Leary. Uh-oh. Goodness gracious. What a move. And then the strength to finish the play. That is three spectacular plays in a row by Byron Eaton. Just what you want from your senior. Look how he thrills his teammates oh. with moves like that. Boy, if that doesn't get you up clapping for a teammate, then nothing will. Boy, those numbers don't do him justice. Eight mm. points and five assists do not tell the story of the impact he's having on this game. Oklahoma's gone cold. Look at the run for the Cowboys over the last four and a half minutes. The last field goal for OU is at the 18-01 mark. Tipped away by Brown. You can tell right now Oklahoma State is yep. playing with more energy. Well, and interesting, Oklahoma kind of looking at each other a little befuddled, not sure what to do, not sure how to attack this zone. And Anthony Brown doing a good job fronting Blake Griffin. Oh, my. A foul on James Anderson. That is now four on James wow. Anderson on a baseline out of bounds play. 13.50 to go. What a tough call for Travis Ford. How long can he afford to leave James Anderson over there on the bench? Warren doesn't get it to go. A rebound goes out of bounds off of Warren, and it belongs to the Cowboys. Boy, if I'm Byron Eton, I look Obi Manella in the eyes right now, and I say, buddy, it's me and you. Yep. Uh, until James gets yep. back in this game, it's me and you. Yep. Obi Wan and Byron can. And a whistle and a foul. This one called on Blake Griffin. 
Uh, Terrell Harris went to set a screen on Blake Griffin, and Blake Griffin went right through it. Watch this. Well, you talk about having to have some guts to go set a screen. Watch the top corner of your screen. But just right through it. So Griffin whistled for his first foul. Eton, little hesitation. He's taking over. Right he, now. Is, he is. He is taking over this basketball game. Oklahoma not even close to keeping him out of the paint. He can feel that too, yeah, can yeah, he? Absolutely. He can get to the paint anytime he wants. And now the double team. Oh, they call a foul. Looked like they had Leary trapped and a foul call. This one on Page. Travis Ford is about to blow a gasket. What a great trap. A four-man trap. They got him in the corner of the court. Two players, a midcourt, and a sideline. That's a four-man trap. That's the best place you can try to trap the ball. Page, Oklahoma, keep the ball out of that spot. You're saying four-man trap because of the half-court line and the sideline, right? And you know which two never make a mistake? <laughs> Those two. Uh, the sideline and the midline, they never move. And they never foul. They're, out, they're always there. Here comes Manello. He finds Page on the wing. Tipped out of bounds, and it goes off Austin Johnson. Watch, here's the trap we're talking about. You come over, okay, freeze it. You got one, you got two, you got three, and you got four. You get that man in that spot in the floor, and boy, you're gonna get a turnover right there. Look at the trap, just perfect, nowhere to go. That's excellent execution. We as the Cowboys huddle up now with this eight point advantage, their biggest lead of the game. We remind you that Phillips 66, Proud to be the presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. The next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline, specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, it's hardworking gas. We talked about Byron Eton taking over this game for Oklahoma State. He has six of their last eight points, and on that other basket, he had the assist. Now five assists to go along with that, and he is just doing a little bit of everything. And the key right now is Oklahoma cannot keep him out of the paint. He can get to the paint anytime that he wants. And the defense just is not reacting properly to Byron Eton. Someone's going to have to step up and help like that on Taylor Griffin to keep him from turning the corner. Mm -hmm. The problem, though, when you help out on Eton, he can find the open guy. Like that. Manello. Well, that's two big missed threes for the Cowboys that really would have had this place explode. Taylor Griffin had to adjust his shot. Gets it back. That's Blake bailing out his older brother. Eton pushing it down court. Manello. Good pass. Blake Griffin standing his ground. No foul called again. Leary. Nice move by Omar Leary, and here come the Sooners. And Oklahoma has got to get Blake Griffin involved in this game. Yeah. He's just not touching the ball often enough. 14 points for Griffin with 12 rebounds. He's only, though, taken seven shots. How about that pass? How about that shot? Eton pumping his fist. Harris with another three. Partner, all I can say, Bedlam. Yeah. Bedlam. Griffin with his 13th rebound. Get him the ball. They do. Charge! Anthony Brown, what a great job defensively. Holding his position. So the Cowboy crowd comes to life with Oklahoma State leading by seven. Back after this from Phillips 66. Center or Byron Eton taking over this game for the Cowboys. I loved what he said 
It's very rare when you see a guy who struggles, and he has over his last three games, shooting less than 30%. And Etan saying, look, i got to do more than just pass the ball. I've got to shoot the ball better. You hardly ever hear a guy talk about his own slump. And he knew the numbers. He said, I'm just you know, I'm 7 for 25 in my last two games. And he said, i got to play better than that. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. A lot of times you think, oh, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. They're going right through oh, the oh, Oklahoma oh, defense. Oh, Here oh, comes oh. Warren. And a blocking foul. Count the basket. Oklahoma's defense is terrible right now. Just terrible. I mean, Oklahoma State is shooting layups, uncontested layups. They're going to have to make an adjustment. Good job, Willie Warren, initiating the contact. And it was a good play. Much needed for the Oklahoma Sooners. Harris with his second foul. Warren goes to the line. Willie Warren with a dozen points in this contest. You know, some of the dribble penetrations have just been off of good individual moves. But a lot of them have been off of on the ball screens. And Taylor and Blake Griffin are not doing a good job helping hedge, recover, not doing anything to try to obstruct the path of that dribbler just getting all the way to the layup. So Warren now with 13 points. Eton almost traveled with it. Good catch by Manello. And a foul on Patillo. Tonight's Big 12 game is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, it's the chicken sandwich. Now Manello will go to the line. The foul on Patillo is first. Manello, another double figure game for him. He's been in double figures now in 22 games. He's been in double figures rebounding in nine times, ten times, counting last night for a six foot five inch, really a shooting guard who's playing power forward. You cannot ask for much better production than Obi Manello has been given Travis Ford and his Cowboys. So with Manello shooting well, he's got to right now because James Anderson sitting over on that bench along with Marshall Moses. So good production from Obi Manello off the bench. Warren, good pass. Count that basket, another three-point opportunity. Anytime a team traps you, runs a half-court trap, when you bust the trap, you've got to penalize them. You have to make them pay for trapping you. And the way you do that is you take the ball all the way through. If you allow a team to trap you, you break the trap and then you pull it back out, why not press you? I mean, you're getting to press them for free. Attilo's free throw makes it a five-point game. The foul goes on Manello, and that's his third. A little full court pressure now. Eton gets by that in a hurry. I mean in a hurry. But Griffin changes that shot. Warren out to Crocker for three. Here come the Sooners. Two-three zone by Oklahoma. That's uh, a good idea by Jeff Cape, but the problem is it's hard to match up in a 2-3 zone when you've got four three-point shooters on the floor. Three-pointer from the wing. Page can't get it to go. Quickly up to Warren. Yep, good call. The illegal screen by Patillo. Yeah, it absolutely was a moving screen. Willie Warren went one way, came back the other, and that's absolutely a moving screen. Two fouls on Patillo. Jeff Capel's team at 27 and 4, 13 and 3. Tie, they were in second place in the Big 12 Conference. That's 13 conference wins, ties for their best conference record in Big 12 history. Eton has it poked away. Johnson by his lonesome. Nothing wrong with his back there. No, there wasn't. That was nice. Harris, Page, 
Oh boy, did the Cowboys need that because Oklahoma was on a 7-0 run. Exact same spot on the floor that, that Page, Keaton Page just missed that last three-pointer. And again, it takes you back to what yep. you said yep. earlier about the mind of a shooter. Warren, Harris got a hand in there. Page again. Oh, I like the way this kid plays basketball. Oh, me too. <laughs> you talk about fearless? Are you kidding me, a freshman? That's, that's silly. Read that Boy, page. That page is going to write volumes for yes, Oklahoma State. It is. You're exactly right. Here's a man who has rewritten the books at Oklahoma. Man, what a game. What a game. It's Bedlam. Golly. And again, Griffin, six for eight from the field. He hardly ever misses against the Cowboys. 21 of 26 in two meetings this year. Over 80% from the floor. Unreal. Page again? No. He was feeling it that time. Yeah, he was. A little too much adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, he was. Well, you got to go right back inside. Oklahoma State's gotten out of that 2-3 zone, went back to their man-to-man. -man. Anthony Griffin really battling inside. Nice move by Patillo. With so much attention on Griffin, Patillo finds the free space. This place is electric, folks. this 2-3 zone for Oklahoma has done is taken away the dribble penetration of Byron Eton. It has. Manello, that three-pointer short. Brown, oh, well, he has yeah. been a key figure off the bench. I agree with you. His numbers won't show it, but he's had a big influence on this game. Anthony Brown off the bench. We talked about Marshall Moses in foul trouble. Brown has come in and has done a terrific job. Eton. Griffin was there. The outlet pass. Johnson, three on one break. To Warren. Timeout. It's Bedlam here at the Ford Center. Blake Griffin changing the shot of Byron Eton. And earlier we saw Keaton Page with back-to-back -back threes for the Cowboys to give them the lead, and the Sooners have fought back. Yeah, almost a crossing pattern. Here's Keaton Page knocking down the three, and then in transition, uh, you see Austin Johnson and Juan Patilla almost running a crossing pattern, running an X action in transition, and a nice pass by Austin Johnson just floating it up there at the rim and allowing Patillo to go get it. Boy, and Byron Eton, as you look at Jeff Capel, shouting to his team, Eton, and as we went to this last break, he really got into it with a head official, Curtis Shaw. Didn't like this non-call against Griffin. Oh, yeah, he's right. I mean, he's got his arm over the roof of Byron Eton, and he jumped up into him. I agree with that. Well, he and John Higgins were really going at it. Higgins did a nice job not overreacting and calling mm -hmm. a technical and having an effect on this game. Did a good job of calming Byron Eton down. So tied at 62. So far, this 2-3 zone has been very, very good for Oklahoma. And you wonder, if they stay in this zone, will you see Anderson come off that bench? Shot clock five. Eton. He finds some space. What a move by Byron Eton with a shot clock at one. Did you see how low to the ground he was turning that corner? I'm telling you, that ball wasn't bouncing six inches off the ground. Very much like Sharon Collins of Kansas, yep. the way they handle the ball, right? Low and strong. Stripped away by Eton. Gets his own rebound and is in the land of the Giants. Says, let's pull it out. <laughs> nice decision. 
He looked up at a couple of sequoias there and said, let's get out of the forest. Is he a gamer? He's tired. He's catching his breath. Look at Eton at the top of your screen, folks. His exhausted. hands on his knees. He is exhausted. He's clearing everybody out with a shot clock down to five. One extra pass. Harris again with one on that shot clock. And Crocker has the rebound. I think Travis Ford needs a timeout. He's got to get Byron Eton a chance to get some water and catch his breath. I know they're valuable right now, but you're not going to win this game if Byron Eton's out of gas. Reminds you of Sean Collins in the Kansas Baylor game. Mm -hmm. Sean Collins ran out of gas. Manello. Everybody's out of gas right now. We need to stop at the yeah, filling yeah, station. That's right. Byron Eton, hands on knees. Everybody needs to get a breather right now. So take a break with us with Oklahoma State leading by two. We welcome you back to the Fort Center in Oklahoma City. And Bedlam is broken out for sure. And how about the effect? that Anthony Brown has had on this game. Uh, Anthony Brown has not put up numbers, but he has had a big influence on this game. He's done exactly what Travis Ford has asked him. He's been good offensively. He's converted baskets when he needed to. He has been terrific on Blake Griffin. You say he held him to 16 points, and he's got 15 rebounds. Remember, Blake Griffin came into this game averaging 30 and 16 in the Bedlam series this year. Sixth man of the game brought to you by Motel 6. So Blake Griffin, by the way, if you're wondering, well, is he facing the after effects of that concussion? Well, in the four games since he has returned from that concussion, all Blake Griffin has done is average 27 points and 19 rebounds. Oh, How about that? That's just staggering. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I, I, I'm surprised that Oklahoma is in this game, quite frankly. I mean, for the game, they have seven assists and 18 turnovers. You talk about that negative of an assist to turnover ratio. And they've done a good job to hang around in this game. Quick move by Moses. There's Griffin with yet another rebound, his 16th of the game. I'm surprised, though, that how many possessions OU has had where Blake Griffin has not even touched the ball. Not even looking for him. And there's a foul. That's Moses, and he is gone. Trying to keep him from getting a technical. Moses is gone from this game. Oh, Champion, it's how you play. So now let's go back to Marshall Moses and his impact on this game. It's been a negative one for the Cowboys. Well, it has. This is how it started. This is the second play of the game and his second foul. We told you the principal edge to the game was Marshall Moses, Oklahoma attacking Marshall Moses. Here he is walking off the floor after a second after that last fifth foul. Uh, John Higgins had already warned him and then called a technical. And here's what Travis Ford and the assistant coaches thought about that boneheaded play. Well, I mean, then he got an earful as well from Eton. Oh, Byron Eton laid into him. And listen, he's pumped up. He had a great game last night, had 18 points, eight rebounds, was a key to this game. Principal edge, he was taken out of the game. Zero points, one rebound, five fouls, and for his sake, I hope this game doesn't come down and be decided by just one point. He's sitting over there beside himself really right emotional. now. He very understands. upset yeah, with yeah. himself. He, he knows. understands. He knows. By the way, on the technical foul, Austin Johnson hit one of two. So now Blake Griffin shooting the free throws on the foul. Four for his sake. I hope this doesn't come down to a one-point game. How about that? Yeah, that's just... He made a mistake. He knows it. He's emotional. He's playing physical and just made two bad mistakes. Bad miss there by Griffin. You can see exactly what you're saying about the way Blake Griffin shoots those free throws. It just looks out of sync. Yeah, it's disjointed. Mm -hmm. Anderson back in there for the Cowboys. Oklahoma still in that zone. Ooh, dangerous pass. Got some shooters out there, though, yeah, for the Cowboys. Four of them on the perimeter. Eton, he pulls up. That one go. Griffin with yet another rebound, his 17th. 
17 points, 17 rebounds. Well, we saw 20 rebounds by Kevin Rogers for Baylor earlier in this championship. We saw Dexter Pittman have 20 rebounds earlier today. And Blake Griffin may break the record held by, by Drew Gooden that has 22. Bedlam coming down to the last three minutes. And Austin Johnson hits a big jumper. So Austin Johnson with 13 points, and Oklahoma has regained the lead. They trailed by nine once upon a time. Today's Big 12 game has been brought to you by Phillips 66, hardworking gas. Whataburger, just like you like it. Shelter insurance for your auto home and life. Seek shelter today. Motel 6, we'll leave the light on for you. The most critically acclaimed Volkswagen ever, the all-new CC. And by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts at better prices every day. So left Fort Center in Oklahoma City as Bedlam has reached this destination. We have seen Bedlam so many times in the past, but we're seeing the stars shine now. Blake Griffin, a big game. Byron Eaton, a big game. Austin Johnson has just given Oklahoma the lead. You can see each team with two timeouts remaining. Look at the run by the Sooners over the last six minutes or so. That run has really started down here on the defensive end. They went to that 2-3 zone have been much more effective. Page with a long three. Boy, that was right on target. Griffin, how did he keep his balance? Came down, looked like he landed on a tightrope. 18 rebounds for Griffin. Seems like he gets every rebound, doesn't it? Only because he does. Yeah, I was about to say, there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> he has. <laughs> oh, what a special player. Cowboys will love and almost invite that shot. Look at the hustle by Griffin. But Eton comes up with it. Anderson! Nice job of Byron Eaton picking that ball up and immediately looking up the court. He's walking along having some words with Willie Warren. <laughs> He's talking to that freshman. Seven <laughs> assists for Eaton. So Warren may be challenged by that. Takes a three. You kind of get the sense that maybe Eton goaded him into that shot. I was thinking the same thing. You talk to the freshman, and he's thinking, okay, I'll show you. But still, that's a good shot for Willie Warren. It's not like he took a crazy shot attempt. Well, if you're a golf fan or a club pro, don't forget about registration for the 2009 ESPN National Golf Challenge. For more information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. Now, well, here's Anderson at the line. James Anderson, an 84% free throw shooter. The line for the first time here tonight and misses the front end of the one and one. Brown saves it. Oh my, what a save by Brown. And what a timeout a for save. Travis Ford. What a save by Anthony Brown. That's just hustle. Man, you talk about going after a loose ball. Can we go back to the point of Anthony Brown subbing for Marshall Moses today out of necessity? And what a game he's come up with. It's funny, it's almost like he didn't know it was time to go after the rebound. The shot went up, and he was frozen and didn't even go after the ball. And, well, when he decided to go after it, he went and got it. I think the players were confused. They thought that was a two-shot two foul instead of the right. front end of the one-and-one. One. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. So, Brown, what a huge impact in tonight's game. We remind you that Phillips 66, proud to be the presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. The next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline, specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hard-working gas. Reed, what are we looking for here in the last one minute and 20 seconds in a game tied at 66? It's the same thing we've been saying the entire game for Oklahoma. You just have to make sure Blake Griffin touches the ball. Yeah. He doesn't have to get the shot, but force Oklahoma State to double-team him. But do not come down here and not let him touch the ball in this possession. If you're Oklahoma State, you've got to set a screen and let Byron Eaton dribble penetrate. So 
Oklahoma and Oklahoma State this Bedlam series in Oklahoma City Blake Griffin has had a Blake Griffin type game 17 points 19 rebounds tied at 66 and Byron Eton is helping to guide the Cowboys with 13 points and seven assists. It's Oklahoma State with the ball and a fresh 35 on that shot clock as we near the one minute mark. Eton penetrating again. Seems like he can get into the paint anytime he wants. Pulls up for the jumper. Big bucket for That's Byron Eton. That has been the story of this game. Byron Eton can get paint anytime he wants. It doesn't matter whether they're in a man-to-man -man defense or a zone defense. Byron Eton has penetrated at will in this game. Let's see if they look for Griffin. They do. Big fight for position. Brown and Crocker were tangled up. And the whistle comes. Byron Eton has done this the entire basketball game. He's up fake. He catches the ball and just shoots the gap. Dribble penetrates. Terrible defense by Blake Griffin. I mean, Blake Griffin just kind of waved at him. And Byron Eton's dribble penetrating. Big fella's got to come up and contest that shot. Foul on Brown is third. Ten team fouls for Oklahoma State. So two shots here for Crocker. His first free throw is good tonight. Crocker with a half dozen points. Well, Tony Crocker has been outstanding on the defensive end. James Anderson just four for nine the last time these two teams played. James Anderson with a career high 37 points. Players on both sides now praying as we get down to the last 47 seconds in a tie ball game. We've had eight ties and five lead changes. The biggest lead for the Cowboys, nine. The biggest lead for the Sooners, six. 11 second differential. There goes Eton into the paint again. Strip, but a foul on Warren. Four fouls on Warren, and Eton will go to the line. A 77% free throw shooter for the season, Byron Eton. Three for three tonight. Warren pretty demonstrative after that call, and. Now that goes back. We talked about Byron Eaton, the senior, getting in the head of yeah. Willie Warren. They're down there talking, almost goaded Willie Warren into a bad shot, a quick shot, and then draws the foul on the freshman again. Well, Byron Eaton has been sensational in this game. His 16th point. Marshall Moses looking almost stunned over on that bench. He's already fouled out of this game. Eton misses the second of two. Warren's got the rebound. Timeout. Oh, he almost walked yes, it. Yes, he did. You cannot pick up the ball and keep running and call a timeout. I mean, <laughs> boy, that was close. You don't get the time until the official gives you the time. And Willie Warren. Watch him after he gets the rebound. Well, what a mistake this would have been. Watch, he calls a timeout and he just keeps running. That's traveling. That is a travel. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Boy, the Sooners Ooh. catch a huge break there. He's yeah, saying, did. oh, my goodness, that's a travel. We'll take a look at our defender of the game brought to you by the U.S. Navy. And you talked about him as Crocker has done such a great job on Anderson here tonight. Uh, James Anderson, four for nine from the floor, one for four from behind the three-point line. And you've made the point the entire game. It's not just the nine points. It's only nine field goal attempts. Tony Crocker has been sensational defending James Anderson. So Crocker has been really terrific for the Sooners. Now you've got 26.8 seconds to go. Oklahoma trailing by one. You got to figure if you're the Cowboys or you're the Sooners, the traffic is going to go through Blake Griffin. Uh, you would think. Now remember, Blake Griffin is only a 59% free throw shooter. So the one thing, if you're Oklahoma State, you do not let him have an easy basket. And for the last, the last thing in the world you can do in this situation is foul him and let him make the basket. So if you're going to foul him, wrap him up and don't let him get that ball up to his shoulders. So the Sooners come out of their huddle, and again, Tony Crocker is our Navy defender of the game. As James Anderson struggles here tonight, Crocker's defense has been stellar. And remember, it was Anderson who scored 37 just last Saturday at Oklahoma. Oklahoma State has done a good job mixing up defenses. They played a lot of man. They switched zone almost out of every timeout have they switched defenses going man-to-man. 
They lob it in to Crocker. Is that who he was throwing it to? I guess so. I'm not so sure he didn't lose control of that ball. Eitan. What a move by Eitan. Whistle, foul. Last one on Griffin. James Anderson, an 84% shooter going to the line with a chance to win this basketball game. But how wow. about the move by Eton, Reed? Dribble penetration. This has been the story of this game. Byron Eton has done this the entire game. He has gotten to the rim, and look at all the white shirts going after that ball. Man, great hustle by James Anderson. So now Anderson, who is 0 for 1 from the line tonight, with the crowd roaring at the Ford Center. Bedlam. There's nothing in the world like Bedlam. Travis Ford calls this timeout. He wants to talk over strategy. And probably talking what? Don't. Here's what he's going to say is once he makes this free That's throw, right. don't <laughs> That's foul. That's right. He predicates everything with after this shot goes in, don't foul. Ideally, you would like to make Oklahoma catch the ball going the opposite direction from their basket. They're going to try to take it out, and they want that pass to get the half court to have a chance to have any kind of shot at all. They've got to take the ball out of the net and throw it to half court. If you're Oklahoma State, you're saying if you can steal the pass, then do it. But do not foul. What a game. What a game we've had here today in Oklahoma City. The Cowboys have lost twice to the Sooners this year. In fact, they've lost five in a row in this Bedlam series to Oklahoma. But Byron Eaton has been a little bit better than Oklahoma here tonight. And now to give the Cowboys the lead, here's Anderson. Here comes the pass. It's got to go across half court. It goes more than that to Griffin for the win. Game's over. Well, I don't think anybody knows what happened. That's how everybody in the arena feels right now. Jeff the Cables. officials are coming over to look at it one more time. Not sure what they're looking at. The ball didn't go in. They're looking at the clock. There's the, oh, clock. the clock. Never it started. Never started. Oh my. Oh my. Crocker misses the follow. The clock never, never started. started. After all wow. of that, it has to start once it touches Blake Griffin. Oh my goodness. Listen, the referees have on their belts what's called a PTS. It's the precision timing system. They can start the clock. It's a backup system. They're not primarily responsible for it, but all three refs have that pack on their back, and they can start the clock. Not sure why it did not start. Should start right there. It doesn't start until right now. I mean, my goodness, after that ball is tipped out, that had to be 2.3 seconds. Curtis Shaw had his hand on his PTS unit. When the ball's coming out of bounds, watch as the ball's coming in bounds. And look at his hand on his waist. He's got his hand on his PTS. Look right there. You see it? Mm -hmm. He's got his right hand. He's holding that pack. And one of those refs should have started that clock. I mean, the game's got to be over. It's got to be it's over. It's got to be over. They're looking at that in real time yeah. to see if they can count it down. Now, remember, they can't be helped by any shot clock because there is no shot clock with 2.3 seconds remaining. What happened after the ball got tipped out? I didn't see who gained possession of it. There was the missed putback, and then the ball was tipped out to half court. Right. Certainly by the time the ball got to half court, the clock had expired. There's no way 2.3 seconds had not expired by that time. We're Boy, good. what a tough situation. Right, right here, look, the ball's poked out. I don't know what happened to it as it goes out of our screen, but boy, you got to think 2.3 went off the clock. You have to. I mean, you took There's a no shot. Way. Now, again, it doesn't start until it's touched inbounds. It starts right here. Yeah, that's the right call. And they have ruled that 
2.3 seconds expired through all of that, and Byron Eton and the Cowboys celebrate. Could we have had any closer of a game or better played basketball game than we just saw today? Wow. wow. The same day the Kansas Jayhawks go down, the Oklahoma Sooners fall as well. The top two seeds are out of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Bedlam here in Oklahoma City. Our most valuable player of the game brought to you by Sonic and their new everyday value menu. It delivers the great variety you'd expect, all for only a dollar each. And who else but Byron Eton? Simply outstanding in this game. Took over the basketball game. 16 points, seven assists. Put this team on his back. What a game. Eton, his dribble penetration today, Reed, it was the difference in this contest. Yeah, all day long, he was a leader on the floor, gave the Cowboys everything they wanted. What a basketball game. Nice job of officiating at the end of this game. Well, with 16 points and seven assists, and remember, they had only four points at the half, but the third time is the charm for the Cowboys. They lost the earlier meetings with Oklahoma, but when Bedlam came to Oklahoma City. It was Oklahoma State who prevailed. Now look at those brackets. Baylor in Texas, Oklahoma State. Tell me in your office pool you had those three teams. And now if you're Missouri, you got to be scared to death of Texas Tech. Well, I, you think there's anybody in the America right now who doesn't know Mike Singletary? Uh, what a game for Byron Eton. So Eton in his final game against the Oklahoma Sooners in his career comes up with one of the singular moments of his career with the Cowboys. I was afraid this game could not live up to my expectations and it, it exceeded my expectations. What a so game. After the free throw, here's Griffin. He takes the shot and after that the clock had expired. After the officials looked at it again they realized that 2.3 seconds had expired and the cowboys celebrate and they move on to the semifinals. they'll await the winner of missouri and texas tech what a game in oklahoma city